Modern Pokemon cards continue to reach new highs, and if you ever felt like you were priced out of today's market, you're definitely not alone, and we'll take a look at what I'm doing differently in order to adjust to these crazy times. This is Pokemart. What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and welcome to Pokemart, our series where we take a look at the Pokemon TCG secondary markets. Uh, so we do have a good amount to cover, so let's just jump right into it. Hidden Fates, uh, take a look at TCG player. So not too much movement, lowest price for the Zard is 600. And um, you know, one thing I want to mention is it's kind of nice that, you know, there's a lot of sets where it's like there's only one card you're hunting for if you're cracking packs. Hidden Fates is pretty good about it where you got the four evolutions and like Lele, Mewtwo, you know, they're still going for easily 50 plus dollars. So, you know, at least there's like, what, eight cards you can hit and still definitely pay for the pack. So, um, you know, say what you will about Hidden Fates, at least it's not just like a one hit wonder kind of thing. All right, let's go into the Zard specifically and uh, for Near Mint. Um, but yeah, $600 floating with same about the same place where we looked at last time. Uh, reminder beginning of the calendar year i want to say about that time we were thinking like oh this thing's going to sell around 200 and i think and it did and it actually went dipped a little bit below 200 for a little short period of time but then it's been going up ever since umbreon yeah favorite evolution and uh who knew <laughs> at least i didn't know that until very recently 80 dollars that's pretty absurd. I think we've given away at least one of those. On eBay, these are sold listings, a little bit higher. I think, um, so I started looking at uh, Hidden Fates just for cards to get graded. And I can understand that these do go for higher because these you do play, obviously you don't see a picture. You can take a look at the centering and such. Uh, so I guess that kind of makes sense depending on the centering. Let's see, uh, Charizard on eBay, 650. And that one, I don't know, I feel like the center is not even great. <laughs> so, and wow, up to 700. Um, oh wait, no, these are what you can currently buy. Let's take a look at sold listings. Okay, actually a little bit lower on eBay. And again, you don't have the advantage of taking a look at the centering. So not too bad there, at least according to, compared to TCG player. Let's take a look at PSA 10. Last time we took a look at this, there were best offer accepted where the starting price was at 2k and it does look like we've gone back a little bit down to 1600 although we do have a 1900 not even best offer accepted and 1700 for best offer accepted um i don't know i wonder if it has something to do with kind of like the information has sunk in that's like all right look this thing's getting reprinted maybe there'll be more of them maybe people are like all right you know i can i'll take 200 off from that 2k price i thought we were going towards hidden fate sealed um maybe tins are getting a little bit cheaper like at this point uh, you do see less of these ETBs sold, although they're still going for 260 plus. I thought at one point they're getting close to 300, but I think maybe this is satisfying a lot of demand, just this influx of tins that will soon be here. And therefore, what is this? Uh, 64210, that's like what, over $30 per tin? That's still pretty high. All right, Unbroken Bond. So, and actually, TC Plays was the same. I was going to start with Unbroken Bond's booster boxes are going for 250. Uh, there appears to have been some kind of reprint where there's a lot of these three pack blisters on the market now, at least from certain vendors like Gamers. I think Gamers, you can still pick it up for, I think, 22 for six packs, which isn't bad. As far as what you can pull, obviously, the Rushies are. Um, I still feel like this one hasn't retraced very strongly, or like. I think in the initial hype, it was like around 200 and actually I bought a few at that time, which is a pretty bad decision. Um, but then it kind of went down to, I think like 130, now it's getting back to like 170. One thing that uh, I feel super caught off guard, because if there was a card that should have been on top of it, would have been the Rainbow Rare Blastoise. Going for 120 and only three available. I'm speechless. Like, I, we'll have to take a look at what this thing goes for PSA 10, at least in the next episode. All right, let's see. Dedene. All right, let's talk about some good things when it comes to playing competitively. If you want to get into that, it's very cheap. Now's a great time to do so. Pick up your Dedenes for about three bucks. Not bad, not bad. All right, uh, Darkness of Blaze coming, and I feel like this the deck that everyone wants to try out is Eternatus. Uh, if you do consider that, I, this is a great. Oh, Great uh, box to pick up, $30, you can pick up 
the V and the V Max. At that point, I'm pretty sure everyone will just be looking for those Crobats. All right, we got next Jirachi once again. Um, that Picaron box just floored the price down to down to 250 for your Jirachi needs. That is awesome. Great to see that. Let's take a look at the code cards because during our streams, this is the most frequently most frequent question asked. It's like, all right, what's the best way to get started if you can spend a little bit of money? We're talking about like, I don't know, maybe like ten dollars, or let's say about twelve. I'm not sure what the number is gonna be, but you can pick up the Picaram deck or code card for that seven. You have a lot of the, all those cards. Let's just see if there's any other. Eh, all right, so maybe seven's actually on the lower end. We see an eight, a ten. This is the Rushes are one actually, and then for the toolkit, you can pick up your toolkit for under seven. So was that like less than $15? Uh, then you can create a, for the most part, uh, ready to go peek around deck. You have like, I don't know, a month before rotation and hopefully you can get, you know, a good amount of coins in that time, tickets for tournaments and whatnot to transition to whatever the next deck you want to create. But that stays like kind of my, my number one recommendation for anyone that's looking to get into the game. And yes, like you do have to spend a little bit of money, but I don't think it's that bad. All right, let's see, Sword and Shield, we keep looking at this because when Darkness of Blades comes, we got those double packs, and we're gonna be cracking a lot of Sword and Shield packs. Looking for, obviously, the Sword Dog. I guess we'll take Zamacenta as well. This is the definitely the one I wanna pull the most. Quick Ball, Secret Rare, very steady at that $30 price. Uh, I have like an eBay kind of like um, subscription where it sends me an email every day for different Quick Balls I got for sale. It's very, like nothing is ever under 30. Case I see like a 20, it's like, oh, 20, maybe that's worth it. Take a look, it's like the digital card. So even, I doubt those are getting sold, but uh, Secret Rare Quick Ball, definitely one thing to, that I keep an eye out for. One interesting thing is also these staff promos. Uh, I'm not sure when it comes to Quick Secret Rare versus the staff promo, I feel like I like the Secret Rare better, but um, there's only one staff available. Actually, this was only recently got here for the while, it's sold out completely. Um, and take a look at how they're sold. I believe it comes in like you get 11 cards and there's one staff and then uh, 10 of the regular promo. And uh, so there's only one on TCG player for $20, kind of interesting. Okay, so now we kind of have a random smattering of stuff that I like to look at on a daily basis. We're starting with the Pancho Pikachus. You know, I'm huge into Japanese promos. They are so cool. And starting with the Pancho Pretend Pikachus, whatever you want to call it. We got the Rayquaza going for over 300. Uh, the Rayquaza, actually, you can you get both the shiny and the regular compared to like to the Charizard. You only get one of them and then you get like the, the uh, normal size card as opposed to the full art. But uh, yeah, the Rayquazas, both of them, PSA 10 going for 300. I believe this is like very easy, like not a guaranteed 10 by any means, but uh, definitely uh, easily graded. Or actually most Japanese things, you know, they're definitely uh, much better card quality than English. And then we got the Charizard ones for 300. Again, this is, I feel like that's not, or obviously it's still really high, but I'm kind of surprised this you can get out of like one of those sealed boxes where this you have to get both of them. Uh, 300 for that. I don't think I have these Vulpix ones. That might be something I want to get at some point. 80 seems kind of high. I think this one though, there's no full art, which is probably why I don't have one yet. Even Magikarp going for over 300. Gyarados 450 best offer accepted. And let's take a look. I think we have the Marios as well. I love these Mario cards. Even the non full art variety. $500 best offer accepted. 395 then you go to the full art PSA 10 650 950 that's absurd I wonder where they I wonder where these two landed at this thing does not work anymore Ooh, some of these signed ones was this the, uh, there were some sign cards on PWCC recent that is awesome all right but yeah Mario Pikachu uh, and Luigi super cool cards and all right this is one another thing I check on a daily base and it's just like no supply the uniqlo japanese promos very few sold all right so it's a psa 5 for 35 dollars sold just yesterday and then pwcc when they had it uh just about 100 if not over a hundred dollars for a psa 7 i think there's four of these cards 
but uh, you can't even see all the varieties on eBay sold listings, which is, yes, yeah, very, very low supply, it seems. I don't know how many of these were printed or how they're distributed, but uh, definitely something I'll continue to look for on a daily basis. Burning Shadows, yes, a lot of modern cards just hitting new highs, and when it comes to our what are the more recent cards that people would be looking for, obviously Burning Shadows, Secret Rare Charizard comes to mind, and um, I don't know what a booster box goes for, maybe we should queue that up for next time, but ETB is going for $50, uh, which... I'm not sure if there's, no, I'm, actually no, I'm fairly confident there's a different print run. Uh, I see every once in a while on eBay, people are like celebrating that they found these for 35 at their target or whatever. Um, so if maybe like the floor is kind of 30 and up to like 50 to $60 shipped on eBay, um, I'll just do a quick Patreon plug for our VIP patrons. We are offering them at $30 a pop. And um, yeah, so ETB is hovering around 50. And the chase card is obviously that Rainbow Rare Charizard. This is one where I do have a bunch of these. Taking a look at the quality or like the centering and whatnot, it's definitely not gonna have a 10, maybe I'll have a nine best case scenario. But uh, this is crazy, $2,600 for a PSA 10 Rainbow Rare Charizard. Um, I think kind of like when I was getting back into the hobby and you know, I was just kind of monitoring this card, it was about 500, which I thought was absurdly high for a modern card. So reminder, this was printed, I think 2017. And so, like, let's let's focus on this 26 plus 2600 uh, price point, and let's just take a look at the PSA pop report, PokemonPrice.com, as of two days ago, 600 tens, 859s, and uh, yes, <laughs> there's suddenly another huge spike. Oh my god! Wait, where are these? All right, so sometime in June, even like 3,000. That is crazy high. Uh, but like obviously we're going through a crazy spike right now and but that 2600 um, Let's just compare it to and early in the month 3000 let me just take a look at this real quick Sometimes they have like another card and then it, it obviously will throw off the numbers But looked like just one card sold for almost 3200 and the thing I want to compare that to is the base Zard unlimited PSA 10 uh, so when it comes to like, oh, this card was only this much, whatever, years ago, uh, the one that always comes to mind for me is picking up the PSA 10 of Base Art Unlimited. Uh, like at the time when I was first starting it, it was like, oh my gosh, $1,000? That's crazy. I'm going to wait for it to go down. Of course, it never went down. And now it's basically around, let's see, PSA 10. Where this thing is also just skyrocketing right now into the 4000 range. Uh, but... Here's the interesting thing, compared to that card from 2017, I think it's 2017, right? Yes, 2017, Burning Shadows one, we are at the same price point three months ago. So, difference of 18 years, like, this is one of those comparisons where like, all right, you could pick up that Burning Shadows Charizard, which, to be fair, there's only 600 of these compared to 430 of the Charizard. So, you know, at least it's comparable compared to like the, the, the uh, the shiny hidden fates Charizard, but uh, for three months ago, similar price point, you could get like one from 1999 or the one from 2017. I'm like I'm like, I'm always base set. That's just my own way of thinking. Uh, but like, yeah, that's modern prices just going through another skyrocket. And one thing I do want to take a look at. One nice thing about the unlimited Charizard, we have a good amount of history as far as price data and. Uh, pricing information. One thing I want to look at is, was there ever kind of like a where the prices were just decreasing? And I have to imagine Charizard, base Charizard is the most liquid card, the most traded, the most sold. And so let's just take a look. And I guess around 2017, yep. So we did have a decrease. And but beyond that, like I do think the general trend is still increasing. And with one period, actually, let's just take a look. So from 21, so maybe around 2000 average down to actually we did lose quite a bit of value up down to like 1200 over the course of maybe like a year or so so it, a lot of people ask me like oh do you think prices will go on i suppose there is some precedence for cards going down but then when you kind of look when you zoom out kind of look at the general general trend like um it's pretty rare and then things kind of got back on track actually no i guess it took like a year to get back to that 2k a uh, few years so yes, there is some precedence for decreasing, and I can't imagine 
Oh, I'm sure I said this before. Like, I can't imagine this is this kind of uh, growth can be sustained. But um, so yeah. So what we're gonna talk about next is kind of or at some point is all right. The prices are just going so high. Maybe people feel priced out. I would say I'm basically in that same situation, kind of like what I'm doing during this time. All right, what else we got? Uh, Base charts are 10. Okay, so let's just see, take a look at the most recent ones. Sold uh, shy of 6,000. Best offer accepted. Here is one for basically $6,000. So, again, like when I got into the hobby, back into the hobby, I was like, all right, this thing's 1,000. I'm going to wait a little bit. And now it's already at six. And yes, almost all of them are well above the $5,500 mark. Okay, Tark Charizard, hmm, so this is the second Charizard that got that first edition stamp. Uh, did have a non-hollow symbol, so I want to find the hollows. It's kind of tricky to search for because people put non-hollow in the title, which, you know, that's, that's probably fine. Uh, PSA 10, 2800, best offer accepted. Let's see, I think there was some like 8s and 9s. All right, even 8, still 440, that's so high. Um, let me see if we can find a nine. What is what is nine going for? Actually, let me just punch it into. Here we go. PSA nine Dark Charizard Hollow First Edition six seventy five. So, you know, a few years ago, I remember picking this up for like a fraction of the price, and I struggled to adjust to these new crazy prices. So this is uh, basically my eBay page, or my own like what I'm bidding on. And uh, so this is ending soonest. So there's like a thing ending in 10 hours that I'm not even not even in. But after that, we go to like the PWCC. So there's seven days, uh, seven and a half days left for this wave, this month's PWCC auctions. And I bid on a hundred, over a hundred of them. I'm only, and basically I went through all of them and was like, all right, these are the cards I'd be interested in. And this is about the price that I think I would pay for it. Um, and very, basically very few times, there are only like a few cards I'll go back and actually wait till the end and maybe try to actually win it at the last, uh, as it wraps up. And then, but like already, there's only 34 that were still in it, uh, still with over a week to go. So like I'm, I can't come, I can't keep with, up with these new prices. Um, so if anyone feels priced out, I feel like I'm in the exact same situation. And one interesting thing, apparently this is a thing. People are getting their coins graded by PSA and they're finally finding their way to PWCC. I think I knew you could do this, but I, I couldn't imagine much of a market. It's like, you know what, these are scores, these are pretty cool. Let me, let me put a bit on it. It's like, it's a coin. It's a plastic coin of a, a million of these. And I don't do anything with them. Uh, <laughs> I was already outpriced. Maybe, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to put a higher bid for this. As cute as this squirrel is. But um, hey, I guess all parts of the hobby are valuable. Including these cute squirtle coins. Alright, so. Um, before we get into what I'm doing, just one, one, one thing I would throw out to as a suggestion as far as new people getting to it is, you know, lower your expectation, maybe zero in on a price range that you want to uh, purchase. We're talking about like have prices ever declined and yes, there was maybe one time frame uh, for base Charizard where prices did go down, but I think it's pretty rare. And um, so as far as like if you want to use the term investing, like our price is going to go down. I kind of doubt it, but, or if, if they do not by much, and then you could just kind of wait it. If hope you could probably try to wait it out if it did. Um, and kind of like my suggestion would be, where do I start? It would be base sets, uh, the base set hollows. And as far as like what PSA grade, don't try to finish like a PSA nine. Um, like I'm never, probably never going to finish my PSA 10 collection. But uh, just keep going down the grades to settle where you're comfortable at. And, you know, I do feel like I can tell you from my own experience, just finishing that collection, doesn't matter. PSA X, some of them are three, which is, that is my Shadowless collection. Uh, I think there is a three still in that set. But when I finished it, that just felt so good. And it's just like something that like I really cherish as far as my collection goes. And just settle on whatever is comfortable, even if it is six, seven, like no worries and I do think there are still some things that are pretty cheap out there uh, base set 2 I talk about a lot still super cheap um, the reason I'm not recommending is like I don't know maybe this thing will never go up 
Uh, but let's see, I think I even saw some, all right, PSA 4, that's like super low, uh, looks better, <laughs> good luck. But uh, under $20, you know, just to finish a PSA set for a lot of the cards being $20, I feel like that's a perfect place to start. Um, is that gonna go up? Maybe, but not by much. But uh, just to finish that collection, and then once you start looking at these numbers, like on a reg on the regular basis, you get a f and you maybe over time you can spend more. But just a good place to start. That would be my recommendation. Base set. All right. So what am I doing in the meantime? Basically, uh, we're now kind of like a lot of my searches revolve around PSA cards. Like for the first, I don't know, year, year and a half, I basically was just picking up raw cards and it's like you know i'll get them graded at some point and maybe now is a good time for me to finish that i did send out a bunch of cards to psa i probably won't get them back for like a year or something um but uh that's probably what i'm working on right now i always sleeving a lot of cards uh right now here we have a base our expedition zard and most of them are actually more modern cards a lot of the hidden fate stuff that i've been opening so you know we'll get those graded i do want to complete my hidden fates psa collection at some point and you know that might be something to a good thing to do as for you as well uh for in case you didn't know how much it costs to get things graded at the bulk price so this is cards under a hundred dollars let me just see i think it's nine earlier nine or ten dollars uh, you can take a look at, on this site and actually for anyone that's part of our patreon group I am looking to basically start some my own service where I'll submit some cards I don't know every couple of months if you something you want me to get you would like to get graded you don't have the membership which costs like over a hundred dollars like hey you can send it to me uh, for the patrons more details of that soon to come but you know a lot of people ask me all right what are you doing during these times where just everything is so high again when it came to the bids I currently made, like losing all of them, and I don't plan on trying again. Uh, so P up or PSA grading is probably where I'll focus. I have boxes of raw cards that are to be graded at some point in the future uh, category, so I'll be working on that. But uh, all right, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. As always, if you have any suggestions of topics we should cover in the near future, or if you have any thoughts or comments, let me know down below. On that, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Wanted Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.